Hi guys, welcome back to our City Break Guide and next up is the fantastic Portuguese city of Porto. We're going to walk you through everything you need to know from what weather to expect during a visit, some of the main attractions not to miss, and even some ideas and some day trips outside of the city. So feel free to leave a comment with any questions and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future uploads. The airport is 14 kilometers from the city center and you can decide between bus, metro or taxi. Buses are run by companies STCP or Azende and they operate various routes into the city and tickets will need to be purchased at the machines within the arrivals hall where you can buy tickets from the driver with cash. Unsurprisingly though, when you consider the cost and time it takes for all three to get into the city, the metro is by far the most popular option for most tourists. The Porto Metro is quite handy to get to a couple of attractions that we'll cover off a little later, but fundamentally the city is quite small, so it's unlikely most tourists are going to need to use the metro much during their time there. Everything to the south of Turandafo Metro Stop is where you'll find the city centre, and all can be reached on foot within 20 minutes. When we went to Porto, we stayed very close to the Metro Stop Campo 24 Augusto, and we found we could get anywhere in the city again in about 20 minutes, and that includes pushing a very stroppy two-year-old toddler in a pushchair. If you do need to use the metro, it's a fairly simple system to navigate. The city is divided into zones and you pay depending on how many zones you need to travel through. The metro tickets you use are called Andante cards and they're rechargeable. So there's a little 60 euro cent fee added when you first buy them. You can buy tickets at the ticket machines, all instructions are in English. And each trip, or they call them titles, costs no more than a euro. There's also a 24 hour Andante card and as the name suggests, entitles you to 24 hours of travel in the city for no more than four euros. Porto's a beautiful city, it's not very fast paced, so you won't be frantically rushing around trying to take in lots of different attractions. It's a city to relax and enjoy some great food and drink and take your time and enjoy the attractions that are available. A good place to start any holiday in Porto is Ribera, which is a cute little area hugging the river, cobbled streets, full of bars and cafes that boast a beautiful view of the city. I suggest start here, grab a drink, get yourself acclimatised before moving on and exploring the rest of the city. The city is quite hilly so it makes for a great river cruise because the city practically hangs over the river so you can see quite a lot when you sail down it. There are six bridges that connect either side of the Douara River so most cruises will sail for around 50 minutes and aim to take you under each one. Expect to pay around 13 euros for an adult, 7 euros for a child and under threes are free. The cable car operates the south side of the river and allows you to get from the top of Louis Bridge down to the banks of the river. It's only half a kilometre in length and the journey time is only five minutes, but it provides a fantastic view of Porto and obviously a great photo opportunity. It costs six euros for an adult, nine for a return, whilst children cost three euros, four and a half euros for a return, and under fires ride for free. The south side of the river has some lovely restaurants and offers a cracking view of Porto on the opposite bank, so we'd certainly suggest heading over there for a bite to eat, but another reason to head over there is very much alcohol related. So Porto's most famous export is port, and the city isn't short of producers selling various wine tasting and tours, most of which are located on the south side of the bank. Now I must confess, when we went we didn't go to any of these, we had a toddler with us, and we don't really like port, so if you are child free and you do like port, this is very much for you. 
There are plenty of options, but Sandman is a popular destination, and there's various tour options, each involving tasting a different number of wines. Expect to pay anywhere between 14 euros a person to 42 euros, depending on tour length and the amount of wines you get to taste. It's a bit odd to have a bookshop in any city highlight, but this is Portugal's oldest bookshop and it's internationally recognised as being one of the best bookshops in the world. It was opened in 1881, full of charm, very pretty and well worth a visit. You'll find it just beside the University of Porto and it's not very big, so expect it to be very busy. Type day trips from Porto into Google and you'll get about a million hits for Douro Valley tours and wine tasting. The wine tasting regions that most tours will take you out to are about 90 minutes outside of Porto to the east and they simply hug the Douro River. Pinhao is a favourite destination of many but you'll see the whole region is awash with wineries and restaurants offering wine tasting and lunch overlooking the beautiful valley. Most tours will cost around 60 euros for an adult and that will generally include a river tour, lunch, guide and wine tasting through the day. Alternatively, Braga is only 50 kilometres north of Porto. There's actually a direct train line. It'll take about an hour. You could drive it in about 40 minutes. And if you like Baroque architecture, you'll love Braga and its many monuments. A lot of tours will also take you to Guimarães too, as it sits on the edge of Braga. And there's a pretty little city and it claims to be the birthplace of Portugal. So it holds a huge amount of historical significance and well worth a trip on its own or alongside a trip to Braga. <laughs> You won't go into many restaurants and not be offered some Francesina, and take it from me, it's delicious. We visited Porto when our eldest daughter was just two years old and there's a couple of nice attractions to be aware of if you're travelling to Porto with young children. The first is World of Discoveries and the other is the City Aquarium. The World of Discoveries is a museum come theme park and it's quite small so it'll only take about an hour to get around. Its purpose is to educate visitors on Portugal's great maritime history, particularly our early explorers like Henry the Navigator. You'll find it to the southwest of the city centre and expect to pay 15 euros for an adult, 9 euros for a child and under threes are free but it's 15% cheaper if you book online in advance. The Sea Life Centre in Porto is quite small but it's quite a nice place to spend a couple of hours if you have children with you. The aquarium is located next to the city beaches and an enormous great park so it makes for quite a nice day out. It's a short ride from the city centre on the metro. When we went, we went to the aquarium first then we had a nice picnic at the park before we hit the beaches in the afternoon. Just ride the blue line up to Camara de Matasinos and then it's just a short walk down to the Sea Life Centre beaches and park. Again it's discounted if you book in advance but on the day expect to pay just under 14 euros for an adult, nine and a half euros for a child with under threes being free. So that's what to expect from a trip to Porto, hope you found that useful but before you leave if you are new to our channel we regularly post content and videos onto our channel to give you guys inspiration for your next getaway so go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. Let us know what you think with any comments and of course if you are heading off to Porto anytime soon have a lovely holiday.